Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Book as in Books. I am filming from a different location despite the very bad lighting. There's not much I can do about that. There's not a lot of light in this room. Um, I guess I could buy artificial lighting, but I am a lazy Booktuber. I just prop the phone and film. That's it. So the phone is propped on a music stand at the moment because obviously I'm not near a window and I cannot just prop it on a windowsill. So I am in front of my chimney, the, the, the fireplace, and that is the place where I put all of my paperbacks, books, the mass market paperbacks. Most of them are in French. And I wanted to film here because of the discussion topic of this video. I want to talk about big books. I am the woman who saw the men, who saw the woman, who saw the bear. I saw Steve Donahue's video, who talked about Shelley Swearingen's video, who talked about Ollie from Kim Rinaldi's video about big books. And I wanted to answer all three videos. And uh, as you can see, well, you cannot really see it well. I was hoping it would be clearer. Uh, there are quite a few big books in there, not necessarily mammoths. So there are a whole bunch of mammoths in there. Uh, for example, th this one here, that is Shogun. That's a mammoth. This one here, um, that is... I don't know the title in English. I'm pretty sure it has been translation translated. The author is uh, Jean-Marie Blas de Robles, something like that. And if I translate the title word for word, it would be Where the Tigers Are Home. And the one above, it's uh, the, the two above. It's not two. It's one book. It's The Count of Monte Cristo. So just right there, you have three books that are over 1,000 pages each. Um, and here there's a colorful side you can see a bit more um here uh, the, the, there's a trio a trio blue pink and red that's a single book that is uh, les miserables by victor hugo uh the blue one here that is another duma that is uh, queen margot uh then there's the orange and yellow again that is a single book that is uh, don quixote and then we have david copperfield and th there are plenty of big books in there so i like big books and where, where should I start? I'm improvising. A bit like Shelley, a bit like Ollie, a bit like, well, Steve always does it, but I'm improvising here. So I'm going to start with Ollie from Corinne Ollie. He asked us to pick the last 10 paper books that we've read and see how many of them we can hold in one hand. Because he was wondering, um, is it possible that newer books are getting bigger? And do you prefer to read short books, three short books or one big book? So I have prepared the ten, the, the previous ten books that I've read. Two of them are stand-ins. They are there are two books that I borrowed from the library and have brought back to the library, so I don't have them anymore. But I use stand-ins of about a similar size, and th there's a reason because there's one of the two that I really want to talk about. So I'm, I'm just going to pick them up. So. These are the last ten books that I read, though not necessarily in the order I read them. And as you can see, there's not a chance I can hold them all in one hand. Um, I, I'm struggling to hold them in two hands. Can I just make a pile out of it? Or one hand pile? I can, I can do that. Um, as you can see, there's absolutely no way I can pick them all. They're, they're, they are bigger than my hand. So some of them are quite short. Uh, the, the trio on top is, uh, I put the three shortest on top. That is The Prime of Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Spark, Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers, and What the Boys Did Over There by Themselves, uh, which is a collection of uh, uh, accounts of soldiers of uh, their experience in World War I. And all three of them, the longest I think is 160 pages and the shortest is 130 pages. Oh no, the, the, the Sayers one is almost 200 pages. So all three of them are well under 200 pages. Um, and it makes a very quick read. Uh, what, th this is a stand-in. Th th this is a, the uses and abuses of history, but it's about the same length as the nature book that I read for Springathon, which was um, Eloquence of the Sardine by Bill Francois, which was really good. I also read The Lost City of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston. How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. The Fabric of Civilization by Virginia Postrel. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. The Right to Sex by Anna Srinivasan. And another stand-in, which would be a new release about this length, about this size, that is about 600 pages. It was We Don't Know Ourselves, A Personal History of Ireland by Finton O'Toole. Now, to go back to the question that Kurnali asked, 
would we prefer to read one big book or three small books? In the case of this pile of books, this very precise pile and the, the ones the standards are supposed to represent, the last 10 books that I've read, my favorite by far was the last, the, the biggest book. Of these 10 books, there's just one that is over 300 pages, and it is We Don't Know Ourselves by Fintan O'Toole. It was almost 600 pages long. So that book alone was probably the length of four books, four other books. Um, the other ones, the second longest was probably Lost City of the Monkey God. All the others were, I think, yeah, all the others were under 300 pages, and even Lost City of the Monkey God, I'm not even sure it was 300 pages or perhaps the fabric of civilization. Anyway, most of these are not 300 pages. So um, so in that sense, no, I don't think that newer books are necessarily getting longer, but, 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 I'll, I'll put them back. I was saying, um, newer books are not necessarily longer, but I think Criminali was talking about genre books. Mysteries, for example. Um, in my pile of books, I had Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers. It was 200 pages long and it was a mystery published in the 1920s, so in the golden age. And yes, I think mysteries have gone much longer nowadays. Um, I don't have a ton of them behind me, but it's not in the frame. Just outside the frame, there's a uh, C.J. Samson, uh, which is a historical mystery set during Tudor times, and that one is well over 500 pages long, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, yes, so the mysteries are getting much longer. Another type of book that I wish was uh, shorter, we cannot see it, it's over there. Uh, I have a pile, well not a pile, I have a few uh, um I have a few books from the Bridgerton series. So it's a historical romance by uh, Julia Quinn. It's the books at the origin of the uh, Netflix series. So uh, I have the first five books somewhere in there. And um, historical mystery, uh, not mysteries, historical romances in general are about 350 to 400 pages. I think it is what publishers are asking for. They want uh, finished products that are 350 to 400 pages long for historical romances. And I think that's too long. I wish it was no more than 300 pages. Um, like for um, mysteries, the, the, the basic plot is simple. In a mystery, you have a body, you want to find out who killed it. Uh, in a romance, you have person A falling in love with person B and we want them to get together. So the, the plot, ba the, the basic plot is quite simple. And sometimes I think that forcing the story to be longer, like to, to be 400 pages or 500 pages, it's just stretching it. And I think they would fit very well in no more than 300 pages. And sometimes I wish publishers would uh, take that into consideration and uh, would just shorten the books. However, like Ollie said, uh, we get more bang for our buck in a big book. Uh, if we divide the price by that we paid by page, the most expensive books I ever bought were small books. Um, I think I bought I bought a book that was $25 and it was under 200 pages. So that's more than 10 cents a page. I think it's outrageous. However, um, if we take a big book like, let's say, Shogun, that was about $10 and it's about 1,000 pages, that is a very good bargain. So if we count by page, the longer books are cheaper. So that's one reason to like big books. Back to the big books, the, the reasons why I like big books. So one is the price. Yes, you get more uh, bang for your money. Uh, another one is that they are easy to find in store. I don't know for you, but for me, when I'm browsing on shelves, the books that I will see the most easily are the bigger books. And probably if you are scanning the, the, the shelf behind me, the, the books that attract you, that, that occupy your eyes the most are the big books with red spines, I guess. Shogun is probably the one that is the most visible in this file. Um, behind me, well, the, the darker spines in the middle of the white spines are visible too. Um, oh, that's uh, Ivanhoe by uh, Walter Scott. And that is, oh, uh, The Corpse Reader by Antonio Garida. So this is a translation, this is a mystery. Um, but be besides the color, um, I guess it's thickness that is the, the thing that attracts your eyes. So it's much easier to, to spot a big book on the bookstore shelf. So that's the second reason why I like big books. Well, it's not so much that I like, but my mind is tricked into liking them. 
Third reason I like big books is that um, it's easier to forgive a mistake in a big book than it is in a small book. Uh, once upon a time, I had a neighbor who was an artist. She drew, she painted, she was a teacher in an art school. And she once told me that if you're a beginner at drawing, at painting, start big, don't start small, because on a much bigger canvas, a small line that is out of place will not show. And on a tiny, tiny piece of paper, a small line that is out of place will show a lot. And I think it's the same in book. Uh, in a book that is huge, that is thick, a character, just one single character that is not quite clearly defined, that is a bit not interesting, if it's in a cast of 100 characters, it won't really matter. But if it's in a book that is about 100 pages long, it will show a lot. Same thing, a weak chapter or a weak, uh, uh, a plot line that is not quite as interesting as we'd hope for. In a big book, it doesn't matter that much because you will have other plot lines, you will have other pages, other chapters that will keep you busy and that will remain with you. And you will forget the weak one as in a smaller book, in a shorter book. It's unforgivable. A bad chapter will kill the book. A bad chapter in a small book makes the book bad. A bad chapter in a long book has no influence. You need multiple bad chapters in a long book to make the book bad. So that's a very important reason I like big books. And finally, which is the most important reason, I think, is the big books have much more possibilities. More possibilities to explore the characters, more possibility to explore the settings, more plot lines, more plot, uh, more things happening. Uh, it, you just have more possibilities in big books. So that is another reason why I like big books. Um, I want to talk about some of the big books there. I think I'm going to do a shelf tour. So I'm going to take the phone that is right now resting on the music stand. I will turn it around and film, but I will hold it with my hands. So it's going to be very shaky. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't know how else to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will start at the bottom left corner of my chimney piece, of uh, my chimney mental, my, my, my mental piece. Well, there we go. Sometimes I cannot find words. Uh, like I answered in a comment to Margaret last week because I couldn't find the word evolve. Uh, sometimes words in English are like cats. They hide under the bed and even though I know them, they don't come up when they are summoned. So um, here we go. On the left side, we have La Vérité sur l'affaire Harry Kerber. Um, I'm going to leave... Uh, I, I, if I talk more about a book, I will leave the English title in the description box because most of them are in French here. So that one was a thick book and it was a page turner, I guess, but at the same time, it was very forgettable. Um, the, the ending, if I can call it that, it's about half the book. It kept twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting and I completely forgot how it ended. So it's very good, it's super interesting, but at the same time, I think it's forgettable. Um, now I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to stop just on the big books. C.J. Samson, Dissolution. So that is a historical, a historical mystery set during Tudor times, and that one is absolutely worth it. Um, and I think in that column, that is it for big books. Yes, it is. Next column. Um, Next column, most of these books are about 400 pages. Oh, The Pillars of the Earth, that is a big book. And that is a page turner. And same thing for the, the sequel, it's not quite a sequel. It's just another book in the same universe, if I can call it that, which is A World Without End. Uh, both are set in the Middle Ages. It's about the building of cathedrals. And they are absolutely worth your time. They are page turners, the characters are interesting, and they are a lot of fun to read. Now I'm going to move a little bit. I'm trying to stay stable, but I'm not very good at that. So this is a pile of books where there are lots of classics, so there should be quite a few big books in there. Like I said, the three volumes of Victor Hugo, Les Miserables, I loved it. Some scenes in there are etched in my mind. Some of them I've read and reread multiple times. I think it is absolutely worth your time. Um, La Reine Margot by Alexander Dumas. Dumas is worth your time too, though he did wrote a lot of crap. He did write a lot of crap. Um, very often he was paid by the line. So what happened is that 
uh, very often some characters had completely inane conversation, uh, one-line things. For example, um, uh, one character, let's call them A, has something to say to B. So A talks to B and says, there's something I must tell you. What is it? I don't know if I should tell you right now. Well, then when should you tell me? I'm going to check if nobody's listening. He goes to the door. He comes back. Okay, nobody's listening. Here's what I have to tell you. Please tell me, you're killing me. Here it goes. And it goes on like that for a page and a half and it's just really annoying. Um, oh, Don Quixote, that one is totally worth your time. Now, this is one that is not a page turner. It is one of the first novels ever written. So it's not exactly constructed as we expect a modern novel to be constructed. So it can be a bit of a challenge to read, but at the same time, it's very satisfying. Once you've read it, you, you are going to love uh, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza for the rest of your life. You cannot not love them. David Copperfield, that is one novel that I think I enjoyed more because it was long. Had I spent less time with David Copperfield, I would not have liked the character as much. I would not have remembered the plot lines as much. And I think it is well served by its length. Um, Jules Verne, that is the book that I read for much of the mammoth last year. That's the mysterious island. And you can see a couple of Zolas in there, uh, Stendhal, the red and the black, uh, some Marcel Proust. So these are all classics that are of a certain length, but they're not necessarily mammoths. But I think, again, um, some of them are well served by their length. Um, next column. Um, I think it's more modern in there, some Haruki Murakami, that is the end of time. I did not enjoy it that much. I have not read, no, I have read some other Murakami, but it was non-fiction that I read. Oh, Georges Perec, um, that is uh, Life and Owner's Manual. That's another big book. I don't know exactly how long, probably not a mammoth, probably around 500 pages, but absolutely worth your time. Uh, Lionel Shriver, we need to talk about Kevin. Again, a book that is not a mammoth, Let's call them elephants when they are between 500 and 800 pages. So not a mammoth, but an elephant and absolutely worth your time. Um, two French Canadian books that I absolutely love. Um, so yeah, I don't have much to say about these. So I, this, this is turning into a bookshelf tour, I guess. Uh, some, this is some nonfiction. Uh, the biggest one by uh, George Corm is about the Middle East. I haven't read it cover to cover. I read some uh, chapters here and there. was very... Um, I didn't know much about uh, the Middle East, so I learned a lot. Um, I think in that column that is all... Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Then this one, again, more recent books. Oh, The Corpse Reader. That's a mystery that is quite long. And that is a mystery that takes a lot of time to start. Uh, the, the summary at the back tells us the story of this, uh, of this student who must solve a puzzle of some sort, a murder of some sort. But before it happens, it's half the book. So it's more a historical novel than it's a mystery, in my opinion. The two Leonardo Paduras, these are historical novels. They have multiple timelines, uh, they have multiple settings, they, they are linked. Uh, always one of the settings is set in Havana. My favorite of the two was The Men Who Liked Dogs, The Men Who Loved Dogs, and that is uh, Leon Trotsky, uh, who was assassinated in Mexico on the orders of Stalin. Walter Scott, Ivanhoe, uh, Stefan Zweig, The World of Yesterday, that was awesome. Uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, I haven't read it. I'm, uh, I think we can see a piece of paper. Um, yeah, I think I made it about halfway through. Okay, this is the column of Russian classics. This is Dr. Zhivago, uh, a historical novel that I, I quite liked, but at the same time, I forgot a lot about it. Vasily Grossman, this is definitely a mammoth. I haven't read it yet. It's a DNF. 
Um, it's the one that has just been translated for the first time in English. It is, I think, called Stalingrad in English. And I was, uh, well, when I was reading the back cover, it said that it was the one that came before Life and Fate. So I decided to read it before I would read Life and Fate, but it's a DNF. So I guess I'll just jump to Life and Fate and uh, never mind that one because, um, yeah, it's, the beginning at least is not particularly interesting. Um, and then a lot of Dostoevsky. Oh, Vasily Aksionov. That's the one that I think is not translated. It's in two volumes. It says one and two, but it's just a single book. And um, unfortunately, it's that one is not really worth your time. The beginning is super interesting, but then it just collapses on itself. And it's one of the worst endings I've ever read. Um, yeah, so th that one would be not necessarily a waste of time, but not necessarily worth your time. Brothers Karamazov, absolutely worth your time. Svetlana Alexievich, this is a second-hand time, absolutely worth your time. And then a bunch of the Sievsky. Um, the, the bigger one at the top is Les Possédés, that's the demons in English. And that one, I think, is the most forgettable of the Sievsky. I don't remember it. I should reread it, I guess. Um, then War and Peace in two volumes. And then some more Dostoevsky, uh, Crime and Punishment, and The Idiot. Uh, uh, then, some more classics. Jane Austen, as you can see. The Three Musketeers, we'll see quite a lot of it. The Count of Monte Cristo, absolutely worth your time. This is a page turner. The characters are super interesting. That one I've read cover to cover at least twice, if not three times. And I've gone back to my favorite scenes more than once. Um, because I do that. I read by scenes. This one is probably translated in English. That is where the tigers are home. I will leave titles in the description box, as I said. That one, I was a bit disappointed. I enjoyed it while I was reading it. But um, at the same time, one of the things that I enjoyed was wondering how the three storylines would, would uh, be weaved at the end. And it turns out that they're not. So that was a bit of a disappointment, but I'd like to reread it. And then Shogun by James Clavel, which is an absolute page turner. It's super fun. The Three Musketeers, 20 years after. The Three Musketeers, 20 years after. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And then in this column, I don't think we have any mammoths, any big books. These are books that I read more recently. Um, some of them I hated, some of them I loved. Uh, Max Gallo, Machiavelli and Savonarol, that is crap. Uh, Philippe Lançon, Le Lambeau, that is great. That is uh, the memoir of uh, a journalist who survived the Charlie Hebdo attacks. Um, good Omens. Um, oh, here's a big mammoth. That is these two volumes by Eiji Yoshikawa. That is Musashi. Even though they have two titles for the volumes one and two, they are one book. Uh, it's not a sequel. It's just a single book. You, you are left dangling in the middle at the end of the first. So it's just a single book. And then we have some Bridgerton to finish the wall. So I want to go back a little bit to here, uh, a bit to answer Ollie's question of, is it preferable to read, let's say three big books or a dozen shorter books? So I'm going to hold the phone with just one hand. It's going to get shakier. So here we have three books. We have Shogun, where the Tigers Are Home, and The Count of Monte Cristo. So that's three books, uh, about six inches in length. Uh, in in uh, Not in length, but uh, the pile is about six inches tall. Now, if on the right we take the same six inches, we get 12 books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So if I was given the choice, um, I was to be sent on a desert island for a full year and you can take six inches, a pile of books that is six inches long, either the left pile that is Shogun, where the tigers are home and the Count of Monte Cristo, or the 12 books on the right, which are a nonfiction about the Medici's, uh, a sh very short fiction about Algeria by Joseph Andras, a play Cyrano de Bergerac, um, a mystery set in uh, Conakry in um, Guinea, uh, a historical novel of World War I that, that won the International Booker Prize last year, I think, uh, that is At Night All Blood is Black, a book about books, uh, Kim Tui, I think I have two of her books in that little pile, yes, two of her books there. It's about uh, 
both of them, though they are different, they're about emigration and uh, fleeing Vietnam and finding refuge somewhere. A uh, collection of essays by Georges Perec. We have Good Omens here and the first of the Distworld series by Terry Pratchett. And to finish off, we have a, a memoir by Romé Gary, who uh, tells who, who is a writer. And in the memoir, he talks mainly about his childhood and World War II. Um, he grew up in Poland, then he moved to France. In the 1930s, he became an officer in the army. However, because he was a Jew, he did not get the posting that he was supposed to have. And when World War II started, he was lucky enough that he was in Northern Africa and he managed to flee to England and he fought the war on the Free French Force side, so from England. So that is super interesting. But if I was given the choice to, between the three books on the, on the left and the 12 books on the right, I would pick the three books on the left because I think even though there's less variety, so the three books are fiction, and on the other side, we have nonfiction, we have a mystery, we have historical fiction, we have fantasy, we, we have a whole bunch of things on the right column. But the three books on the left, I think, have more con content. I think the characters in the books on the left are more interesting. I, I prefer the three books on the left than the 12 books on the right put together. So if I had to choose, I would choose the three books on the left rather than the 12 books on the right. Now, if I could choose three big books, let's say, let's keep with the three books there, the Shogun, the Where the Tigers Are Home, and the Count of Monte Cristo. And instead I could choose 12 other books, any other 12 books. So either that, that would be about six inches tall. So, so the same amount of books, but in 12 different, or, or 10 different books or 15 different books, it doesn't matter. Like a, a pile of six inches of small books rather than the three big books. And that I could choose any 10 or 12 books. I think I still would go for the three big books. Um, I don't think there's a pile of 12 short books that would be as interesting to me as the three big books on the left. Back to this view to finish the video. I'm a bit out of breath because it turns out that filming like this, it's difficult to talk and to hold my hands like this. And uh, yeah, so I'm a bit stiff and I'm a bit out of breath. But to, to, to finish the video, um, as I said, if I had the choice between these three books and any 10 or 12 books that would be about six inches tall, I still think I would go for the three big books. I think there's more to get out of these three big books than there is to get out of 12 small books, regardless of which what they are. Um, even if they are books that I love, like uh, there's the Cyrano de Bergerac, which is my favorite play that could be in there. Uh, perhaps I could choose a um, book of short story by one of my favorite writers, which is Marcel Henry. Perhaps I could take uh, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Sparks. And perhaps I could take uh, an Agatha Christie, let's say. And regardless of what I could pick for these 10 or 12 shorter books that would be about six inches tall, I still would prefer the big books. I still think there's more content in the big book. I think there's more to get out of a big book. Uh, the rereading of a big book is much more agreeable than the rereading of a small book um, because I think that there's more to discover. There are more layers in a big book than there is in a small book. I think. I don't know. It's my opinion. Let me know what you think. I'm very, very curious to know what you think. Are you intimated, intimidated by big books or are you attracted to big books? To me, they are attractive. I see them in the bookstores and I want to read them. However, it does happen that when I see them pile up on my, on my shelves on the TBR, that I'm not necessarily going to take the big book first. I may go for the small book first. Uh, one of the books, the one of the three books, the one in the middle. Um, uh, I remember when I bought that book, it was for my birthday. I had gone to the bookstore. I had bought a pile of books and I knew that if I did not start with that one, I would probably not read it. Um, so I knew I had to start with it while I had the enthusiasm for it, while it was all new and exciting that I should start with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't read it. And that is what happened. I read it and I liked it very much. However, I don't remember it that much. I really should reread it. Um, and um, and I already don't remember what I said in the first part of this video. So I don't know if I'm rambling, if I'm repeating myself or not. Um, 
I guess that means I should end the video like this. Uh, so what did I talk about? I said that I like big books because I think that there's more in the big books. Uh, there's more to get out of big books than out of small books. I think that genre books should be shorter. I agree that a mystery and that a romance should probably be shorter than what they are today. Um, yeah, I think I think they, they don't handle well being stretched out. However, some do. It really depends on how it's done. There are very good uh, mysteries that are 500 pages long and there are some that are not that good. So really it depends on how it's done. Um, something that is not that there's not very much of on, on these shelves it's non-fiction because most of the non-fiction I read is in English and non-fiction in English doesn't make it to mass market paperback it's just in trade paperback or in hardcover um, so so most of most of my non-fiction is not on these shelves in non-fiction I tend to go for perhaps shorter books I have to admit that a very big thick non-fiction book will be intimidating uh, maybe not a biography. That's probably the one thing that is not as intimidating when it's long because we know it's uh, the story of a person's life. So in that way, in that sense, it's a bit like a novel. We are following one character. It's a person who actually lived, but it's still just one character and we follow them from birth to death and, well, depending on the biography. But it, it's one thing that is that, that we know that there's a storyline, there's an arc, there's a progression. That is one thing that, that makes a biography perhaps less intimidating than some other type of nonfiction that would be 800 pages long. Um, I have uh, on my TBR that I have not read yet, I have Dreadnought by um, Robert K. Massey. And that is a bit intimidating because it's about uh, arm, uh, an arms race uh, between England and Britain uh, before World War One. And that is a bit intimidating, so I don't know when I will read that. But nevertheless, when I saw the book, I thought it looked super interesting, and I think the length makes it interesting. And um, that's it. I think that that's where I'm going to stop talking. So I'm just going to ask you, if you had the choice between the three books that I mentioned, so that's The Count of Monte Cristo, Shogun, and some books you, some book you've probably never heard about, which is Where the Tigers Are Home. So if you had the choice, you are sent on a desert island for at least a month, maybe more, and you can bring a little pile of books that is six inches tall. What do you bring? Six, maybe seven inches tall. Um, what do you bring? You have the choice between these three books, so The Count of Monte Cristo, Shogun, and Where the Tigers Are Home, or a catered pile of books, of uh, a variety of shorter books. Um, you're allowed to cater it. Well, I don't know if you're allowed to cater it. No, just stick to the 12 books that were there. So there was a mystery or, or something similar, a mystery, a nonfiction, a play, um, um, a fantasy, well, two fantasy books uh, on the funny side, well, two Terry Pratchett's basically. Um, what else was there? Um, I, I already, a, a, a memoir of uh, growing up in Europe in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, what else was there? Oh, a couple of slim books about emigration from Vietnam to Canada. And uh, they, these are not memoirs, by the way, they're novels. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so if you have the choice between the, the, little, the three books, the three big books, or the 12 little books, which one would you pick? I'm curious to know that. And uh, yeah, if you have anything to add about big books, whether you like them, you hate them, they're intimidating, you, you love them, you uh, you avoid them. Um, or if you want to make a, a video, if you have a booktube channel and you want to make a video about it, let me know. I want to see it. And uh, I think that is it. So thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!